Drawing.dtl or detail files control the way that different entities look on your drawing. And these include things like your views, cross sections, arrows, dimensions, notes, text, so on. Don't confuse detail options with config.pro options. If I go to File, Options, and then Configuration Editor, these are my config.pro options, and some of these do pertain to drawings. For example, here I have a spreadsheet that lists the config.pro options for Creo Parametric 5.0 in drawing mode. And you can see that there are a few of them, but there aren't that many. Where you're going to get the most control over your drawings is with those .dtl options. So let's cancel out of the Creo Parametric Options dialog box. To change your .dtl options, you'll choose File, Prepare, and then Drawing Properties. And here we have two different choices. We can change our Tolerance Standard. And the second blue change hyperlink allows us to get into the detail options dialog box. And if I scroll down through here, you can see that there are quite a few different options that you can control for a drawing. And I'm just going to mention about 15 of them. First off, when you go through the different options, they're grouped by similar categories. So for example, the first group is these options control text not subject to other options. And the one that I want to mention here is the text height. So for example, you might have different .dtl files for an A size drawing versus a D size drawing versus a J size drawing based on things like the text height and also how big your arrows are going to be. For the next group of options, there are just two I want to mention in here, but again, most of these are going to be important to you, so I recommend that you spend some time going through there and making sure that they are configured correctly. So for example, model display for new views, the default is set to follow environment, and I really discourage this. You want your drawing views to be set up explicitly in terms of how they should be displayed, and not just based on whatever mode the viewer happens to be in. So for example, rather than follow environment, I usually use no hidden line for my different drawing views. So I've selected the value, then I will click add change. And there's a little star indicating that this option has been changed. Similarly, tangent edge display for new views, I like to change that from the default value to what I, whatever I prefer to use. For example, maybe I want the tangent lines to appear solid. All right, for the next group of options, I'm just collapsing as I go. Cross-section arrow length. So here are the cross-section arrows. Again, maybe this might be too big for you, so you might want to change the size of the arrows for the cross-sections. Next group of options. Actually, I'm going to jump past this next one for solid shown in views. And let's talk about a few of the ones for controlling dimensions. For example, allow 3D dimensions. If you change this from the default value of no to yes, you'll be allowed to place dimensions in isometric views. Also, similar to the cross-section arrow length, we have our dimension leader length. And if this is too big, again, you can scale it down based on the size of your drawing. And another one in here, dual dimensioning. If you want dual dimensioning, you can set the default no to whether you want it primary and then secondary in parentheses, or for whatever reason, if you wanted to report the secondary dimensions instead, or secondary then primary. But most likely, if you want dual dimensioning, you'll have primary units and then secondary units, and your dual secondary units. In this case here, I have millimeters, but in case I wanted to change it to centimeters or meters, I could do that from the drop down list. And I forgot to make my change here. All right, next up, let's scroll down, and I'm going to pass the next group, and these options control leader. So, for example, arrow style, and the default is filled. If you don't want it filled, you could choose open or closed instead. And similarly, you've got your draw arrow length, and you can scale that down if you want, and also the draw arrow width. If you're going to change the first one, you probably want to change the other one. Okay, scrolling down past a few other groups. 
These options control tables, repeat regions, and bomb balloons. 2D region column fit text. If you have a repeat region for a family table, you can have it automatically adjust the width of the columns for the different family table columns as necessary. Then let's collapse a few of these groups. You have two different options for controlling your layers, whether the drawing layer will override the model and ignore model layer status. And scrolling down some more, for your dimensional tolerances, tall display, if you want to display your tolerances in the drawing, you need to set the drawing.dtl option to yes. Be aware that there's also a config.pro option with the same name, but this controls the display of tolerances in parts and assemblies. So again, parts and assemblies controlled by config.pro option with this name. For a drawing, it's controlled by a .dtl option with this name. And last couple to mention, underneath miscellaneous options, decimal marker has comma for metric dual. Well, I always like to use a period for my decimal markers and yes no parameter display if you're displaying parameters like in a family table instead of true or false i prefer having it display yes or no and so i've got my different options set up in here now that i've configured the dtl settings that i want to use you're going to want to save it out to your disk and i'm going to save it in my c slash creo directory and rather than calling it this name I'm just going to call it demo. You'll notice that if I go back to that folder, I already had one, the one that I use for my drawings normally. But again, it's not uncommon to have multiple .dtl file uh, files for your different size drawings or maybe even different customers. You might have different ones for people who are using metric units versus English units. So let me cancel out of here and close. Now that we've set the .dtl file, there are a couple different config.pro options that you want to be aware of in terms of loading them. So I will go to File Options Configuration Editor, and the first one that we will take a look at is Drawing Setup File. And so this is the, dot, the default .dtl file that will be used when you create a brand new drawing. If you have multiple .dtl files, you could use an option called pro underscore DTL setup directory, and then you can browse and have this point to whatever folder that you use for storing those different .dtl files so that when someone goes into file prepare uh, drawing options, they it'll automatically go to that folder when they want to load up a different config.pro file excuse me, a different .dtl file. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.